the welcome to Whippoorwill Holler. I'm Miss Lori, and this is Mr. Brown. We live in the hills of Arkansas. We love the Lord. Keepers of the old way, but accept some of the new. We love to cook, and we love to eat. We love to garden. It's in our blood. It's how we stay sustainable and fill our pantry. We do a lot of canning and preserving. We live a sustainable life. We love our family. We work hard. And every once in a while, we like to dance. So y'all join us. Okay, let's just get right into this. Because if I wait till everything's perfect, I'm never going to make this video. But a lot of y'all are wanting to know what I've been working on. I kind of started it without telling everybody. Because it's just a project that we've been trying to get done for several months. And, uh, of course, we had the Mennonites come work for us whenever we need uh, some kind of a... Uh, uh, something to do with the house, carpenter, whatever. Uh, and they're the ones that closed in my, my front porch here and made my sunroom, which I absolutely love. And then I think after that, they put my skylight in. Then they got really busy building houses. So it was just a while before we could get them over there here. But believe me, it's worth the wait. So now that they're done... And it wasn't nothing really big, but it was big enough to make a difference for me. And it was a hard decision really because I went back and forth on it. But then I had to ask myself, priorities, where's my priorities at? What was more important? So we'll get into that in just a minute and I'll explain to you what I've done and why I've done it. But I want to show y'all, y'all have seen this probably before. This is one end of my sunroom. This is my favorite spot. This is where I sit and uh, read my books, read the Bible. This is where I listen to old vintage music and, and answer comments. And just, I've been working on another cookbook, so that's where I've been doing my research and and just all kinds of stuff but this is my favorite area right here and if y'all were here with me you would understand it's cozy it's quaint the windows are right here i can look out to the front and i can see my hummingbirds i can see my flowers my birds everything so that is my favorite spot if i turn you around this is the other end without making y'all sick this is the other end of the sunroom whoops you're kind of cockeyed there. And this is where the grandkids play and where they'll sleep. Some of them sleep. And when Mr. Brown's in the doghouse, that's where he sleeps. <laughs> no, not really. No, but a lot of times we'll have a grandchild come over and spend the night. And they don't, I mean, the older ones don't mind sleeping out here, but like little Avery and Mackenzie, they won't sleep in there with Nanny. So guess who has to sleep out here? Paul has to, but it's really comfortable out here. You got, we live way in the woods, so all you can see around you is woods and trees, and you know, it's nice. But this is the other end, and this right here, let's see if I can point at it, that right there is a wood box that opens to the outside, and uh, it's very narrow. It's a very narrow wood box, but it's enough that Danny can load it up with wood and, uh, very easily and then when we need to put wood in the wood cook stove which we heat our our little house with he just opens the top of it up from inside and gets his wood out and then I've got an old dresser that was given to me that I stuck here because I didn't really have another place to put it and it's such a pretty piece of, of uh, furniture but anyways this is the other side of the sunroom and you can see I've got my little stained glass there in the window and all my plants and stuff. So I just want to show y'all. 
that I just, this is one of my favorite places. Now, I'm not going to do a big old house tour today because, well, to tell you the truth, my house just, <laughs> it's, it's just not perfect. Uh, and it probably never will be. But, uh, first I'm going to explain to you what we've done. And then I'm going to take you around and show you the, the process of it and kind of talk about why I've done it. But, uh. I'm going to kind of turn y'all around. Okay, this is uh, walking in off the front, off my sunroom right here. This is the, I'm sorry, this is the big, as you come in from the outside door, you'll walk into the sunroom, and then this goes into the main part of the house. And right here, is our wood cook stove. That's how I cook and bake in this in the winter time. That's how we heat our house. Right here is our dining room table to the left. And then you're gonna go well over here in this corner to the right is a is a sitting area right here. That's where Mr. Brown sits all the time. That's his chair. And there's a TV over here in the corner that we hardly ever, ever turn on, but it's there for the, if anybody wants to watch the little TV. And then of course, this is the main part of my kitchen. This is where everything goes on, right in here. And uh, I've had people comment how they love my kitchen, and then I've had people say, I just, <laughs> it's just too much for me, Lori. But what you see is who I am. This is who I am. Old, primitive, the old style, small, but everything accessible that I can get to it without. I mean, it's just right there. And, you know, back in the day, they lived in a one room cabin. They done everything in that one room with seven kids. So I really don't think that, you know, it's such a horrible thing. But anyways, like I said, I'm not here to do a home tour today. I just want to kind of give you all an idea. Right over there is where I do a lot of my baking and stuff. And, of course, it's I've got all kinds of stuff sitting over there in the way right now. But I've usually got it cleared off so I can get to cooking. And, yes, I probably have dirty dishes. My favorite cook stove of all time. But we're going to walk around here. And those of y'all that's been with me for a long, long, long time, y'all know the layout of my kitchen. And you know that I've got a walk-in pantry back there in the back. But you had to walk around in front of the sink and beside my cook stove. And I've got two refrigerators that I put side by side back here. And then we're going to walk into the pantry. Now the reason that, if you are new to my channel, the reason that I have two refrigerators side by side is because, um, well, it costs less. I bought two refrigerators for $1,400. They were $700 a piece. A big refrigerator with the, the, the two open doors in front with the big freezer on the bottom had less room in it than these two refrigerators. So to me, this right here made more sense than spending $3,000 on a refrigerator that didn't have as much space. So what they done is they just switched the handles around for me so they would open up together. So back here, and right here I've just got some different things on this shelf. This is an old shelf that I found at a flea market. And it has all of my vinegars and different oils and spices and stuff. And up here is our coffee and espresso and everything's handy right here for me to grab and cook. 
I don't, I just, I've got this thing about closed doors where you can't see anything. And when you open that door, you can't, the only thing you see is what's right there in front of you. You have to dig behind to find everything. And it takes you 20 minutes to find what you're looking for when you could have just grabbed it and continued with your cooking or baking. And that's just me. That is just me. And this is the walk-in pantry. I'm going to take y'all off the tripod. It's just easier. Now, I'm going to tell you right now. I need to do some organization in here. But, like I said, I needed to get this video done to show y'all what, what we've been working on. This is a little corner back here beside the refrigerator that that is a ice cream maker. That's some different, um, let's see, that's potato flakes and uh, some different flowers up there. I think it's cake flour and um, one of them I think may be my pre-mix, uh, like Bisquick mix that I make I think is in that one and I need to do a video on that this right here is in the way but that goes that goes up to my light hanging here I've got this for making cheese my little uh, cheese drainer colander mold thing of course making pasta I used to make homemade pasta all the time and I love this this little um, machine here it's hand cranked, but it does a really good job. Um, down here is some of my canning stuff, my canning, some of my canning books. This right here is just a fun thing that I, there goes that, there goes that um, warning again. Something's out here, something's out here in the woods. But this right here is just something I bought, I think, at Aldi's for the grandkids. We ain't even, we ain't even used it yet. And I've just got odds and ends in here. There's some more of my, my canning stuff. I'm going to take this down. I've got miscellaneous jars. I've got um, some bought jam here, pepper jam. Whoops, whenever I go to uh, Amish stores and different little places like that, I always pick something like this up. I've got different seeds, um, golden flax seeds, um, pancake mix, I've got dried jalapenos, uh, just all kinds of things back there that's accessible to me that I can get a hold of real quick. That right there is some, I think it's Anaheim peppers dried. Back in here are some of my homemade mixes. I need to make some more spaghetti mix. This is brown gravy mix that I make homemade. And I've got I've got videos on this. This is a pork rub. I'm not sure what that is. I'm sure I've got it written. Taco. Oh, that's my taco seasoning that I need to make more of. My chili seasoning. And I've got a video on this. And anybody that made this chili seasoning said they absolutely love it. It's got a secret ingredient in it that just makes it so good. This is a Creole seasoning that I made up. Right here, hanging on the side, is just a little basket that I keep my Ziploc bags in handy because I'm constantly coming over here and needing a Ziploc bag. And that's what you heard fall on the floor was can cannon rings. Of course, my divider for my canner. Over here, I've got paper bags from the farmer's market, beeswax, food wraps my food saver bags that's what most of this is is food saver bags 
my oxygen absorbers. Way back in there is where my plastic forks and spoons and stuff like that for camping or a party or whatever is back there. My bags I use when I go to like Sam's Club or something. Then I've got paper plates down here. Got some onions that need, I need to get out of the bag. I didn't make very many onions this year. Uh, hopefully next year um, we'll get back on the ball with onions. But this year I didn't have, I didn't even plan any, to tell you the truth. What I had left over in the garden is what we had. This right here is just miscellaneous utensils, kitchen utensils, different things that I bake with, uh, like uh, donut cutter and oh, there's just us all kinds of little gadgets in there. And on some of them gadgets, y'all have sent me yourself. I got some milk bottles here. We have some stores around us, American Made Store, and then we've got, it's like an Amish market that sells some of the best milk in these glass containers and if you wash them out and take them back you get a deposit on it. I've got a huge things of trash bags here that I got at Home Depot. They were on sale and they've got a uh, mint scent in them that's supposed to keep varmints out of it. I don't know. There's that ring that fell. Back here's a container that I've just got miscellaneous stuff in really and truly stuff that I, it's stuff that I buy at the Amish store and like um, cornstarch, um, arrowroot, I don't know, just stuff like that that I keep down there and there. This is sugar, that's raw sugar. Down in these two containers is uh, just extra stuff that I take out of the, that I take out Like when I'm needing to um, go through my pantry stuff. So stuff that I'm going to use right now, I stick in here and then leave the other on the shelf. Because I know that this is what I need to use first. There is triple or uh, pastry flour in here. There's masa. There's, uh, I don't know, just all kinds of little this and that's in there. And uh, I know that that's stuff that needs to be used. My mixing bowls, I want them handy. I don't want to have to dig and dig and dig to find the stuff that I use every day. My nine by 13 pans, cookie sheets, just uh, muffin pans. If we go back up here, um, like I said, this is my seeds. There's some sorghum popcorn and um, chia seeds. I'm going to move this dishpan, too. I keep my dishpans hanging up here because it's, it's just easy for me to get a hold of. Now, this is what we call my workable pantry. i got to hang that somewhere. Right up here is a... It's just a, bas uh, a thing full of bulk spices. I'm not going to take it down because it's heavy. Um, I don't get into this very much. That's why it's on the top shelf. But when I need to get in to get me, say, some more onion powder or cumin or whatever, it's all in here in big bags that I can refill my containers with. Back there in the corner, my daughter-in-law, they moved. She gave me these cans of uh, powdered to tomato powder, butter powder, and peanut butter powder. Because um, I don't buy this stuff, but she did. And she didn't want to mess with moving it. So she gave it to me. Back there is powdered milk that's not been opened. That is double cream. This right here 
is double cream milk powder. Then of course, you know, the middle one, you can get that at Walmart. And then I ordered this other one from Amazon. That is a really, really good whole milk powder. I'll try to find it and put a link below in my description box. All up in here are my homemade vinegars. Vinegars that I clean with. Okay. Hang on. I'm going to put my dish pans back. Well, let me show you here first before I do that. This is stuff that's not put up. This is still ground flax seed. I think this is celery seed. Nutritional yeast, which I use all the time in cooking, popcorn, stuff like that. Then, of course, my, my dry herbs, sage, basil, bay leaves. This is my everything bagel seasoning. I've got some dry fruit. All this is dates and figs. This right here is miscellaneous stuff, store-bought uh, dressings, salsa, stuff when I make uh, stir-fry. I use chili sauce in a lot of homemade uh, dressings and uh, different things. I've got different vinegars back there. Cinnamon sticks, Danny's A1 sauce, homemade croutons, that's canning salt back there. Blueberry syrup, I think we bought this. Yeah, War Eagle Meal, we ain't even opened it up yet. And I always keep Tender Quick home cure, homemade cure um, in case we have to it gets to the point that we've got to cure our own meat to put up. There's all kind. There's all kinds of different salts. I've got all kinds of salt um, in this container here. I've got little things of seasoning that I buy at the farmers market. Half the time I don't even need it, but I buy them. Cumin seeds and stuff like that. Down here is just a few more things in my pantry, my, my, my workable pantry that I would use. This is roasted red peppers. We've got some pepperoncinis, and I've got a couple jars of both of these because I use them in different recipes. My, I always keep, now I've got a lot of cannon lids and rings, but I always keep some here and then I, all the rest of them are stored in the storage room. But I always keep some here. So when I get ready and I've got to do some canning, it's right here. I don't have to go hunt and dig for it. I buy plastic wrap and full at Sam's Club in the big box. And I have them right here. All I have to do is walk up, pull what I need, cut it off, and it's right there. I don't have to pull it out of a drawer or anything. This stuff down here is just oh, all kinds of stuff. Just It's just all that extra stuff that you have. This is freeze-dried garlic and different spices. This is different spices that I buy from, the, from my Dalton Mennonite store. Uh, Turmeric and different stuff. Um, every time I go in there, I I try to buy something and I just put it back. Back here I've got, in here is bagged flour and cornmeal. Then there's wheat berries back in there. Butcher paper. This back here is just non as well. Let's see, there's a big bag of sugar. That's a huge thing of salt, sea salt. And I think there's a thing of apple juice or something. I try to keep a lot of juice, and it looks like I'm getting low on it. So that's something that I need to to put up. Some more juice. Um, my rings. Somebody asked me how I do my rings. 
These are just on a coat, coat hanger. I just stretch it out and hook it at the bottom so they don't fall off and just hang them up here. Let's see, this I bought for a bread bag. It didn't work. It didn't keep my bread fresh at all. But right now what's in it, if you can hear it, I've got it stuffed with my garden mint. And it's good and dry. But I'm just going to keep it in there for right now because it, it's, it's staying good right there. Here's my wok. I use this wok usually just in wintertime when I'm making stir fry on the wood cook stove because the way it's shaped, it fits right down in the hole on my wood stove and makes the best stir fry. I need to do that for y'all sometime. Okay, on this side of the pantry, this is where my canned, my home canned stuff is. And I can tell you that I absolutely have not canned anything this summer. And I'm just going to give you a couple reasons why. Because everything you see right here is anywhere from two to three years old. We're, and me, it's just me, Mr. Brown. And we don't, I mean, we eat out of our pantry pretty much every day most days but my pantry has been so full and stocked that I've had to slow down take inventory and we've got we've got to start eating this I've got tomato juice I've got green beans we don't eat a lot of green beans but um, I didn't put any green beans up this year what little I did plant the rabbits ate down before we knew it they had it ate down but uh, that's okay because I, I've got that goes about three deep I've got plenty of green beans plus I've even got store-bought green beans if we go through these and I don't have any more I've got store-bought green beans I have got all kinds of pickled okra pickled green tomatoes I've got zucchini uh, relish I've got canned squash for frying I've got pickled squash I've got homemade relish sauerkraut canned coleslaw I've got ghee I've got canned ham I've got canned onions bell peppers Yams, butternut squash. Back in there's all kinds of honey and sorghum. You should always have a good amount of honey put back and sorghum. Sorghum and honey is good for you. Sorghum is so good for you. It's a good source of magnesium and it's also good for your garden. I've got green peas, potatoes. I have got every kind of bean and soup, a few soup, but not a lot. I'm not big on canning soups. I'm at more of an ingredient canner is what I am. But I've got all these canned beans that we've got to eat this summer. I've got beef broth. Okay. So I've taken inventory, and I've got all this space through here. What I need for this winter, not what I want or what's the going thing for everybody to put in their pantry, but what we need, priority, is I need to do chicken broth. I am gonna can up either some turkey meat or chicken. I am gonna can that up because I absolutely love canned turkey or canned chicken. It's, it's just, to me, it's very handy and it tastes really good. I do need chicken broth, chicken. I've got the canned ham and I'm probably going to can some more. Um, I'm going to do some more of my Italian beef tips that I can and I've got a video on that and anybody that's made that absolutely loves it. And I've got a bunch of stew meat that, that I need to, that's what I need to do with it. I've got a little bit of canned corn left from two years ago, or was it last year? And then I put up all this wonderful cream corn in the freezer which is our favorite and so I've got this room right through here 
to put up chicken broth some more i am going to be doing canning some more potatoes because mr brown had a really good crop of potatoes and i'll be doing a video on that because i'm going to be doing it a different way these potatoes and then right here i've I can some potatoes and sweet potatoes together and what I do is drain that and fry them up really good and they're delicious and uh, my sweet potatoes and butternut squash I need I've got to use them this winter before I put any more up I'm probably gonna be making pies for the holidays and get them used up that is pickled corn that we've not got it all right. But what I'm what I'm trying to say is I don't need hundreds of quart jars of green beans. I don't need hundreds of quart jars of tomatoes. I've got I can tell you I've got plenty of tomato products between that and store bought that's in my other pantry. Um because me and Mr. Brown can't really eat constantly eat a lot of tomato product but during the winter we do eat chili and we do eat stews and I make spaghetti sauce and all that stuff but like I said I'm an ingredient canner I'm not one to can up all these different soups and stews and all that but I do have canned up what I would need to make a pot of soup or a pot of stew and that's just me and it's because a lot of it is because I just, I don't have the room. And this is all that me and Mr. Brown need. I think there's just a time that you just have to stand back and say, whoa, let's do some inventory. Let's pull out all this stuff that's two and three years old. We've got to get it eight. Let it get us through the winter time. And then we'll see by next spring and our summer of next summer of next year what our harvest needs to be do i need to plant more green beans probably but not not this year i didn't need no more so that's just me that's just the way we do it over here is a this is where my microwave is because we don't use it very much except to to heat something up really fast and there's just some odd things over here. Um, peanut butter. Some odds and ends in this basket. Uh, different things for making dressings. Uh, I have recipes. Uh, beef recipes for using this one. And then my Lipton onion soup mix. Like I said, it's just odds and ends of stuff, store-bought stuff for recipes and stuff. Lemonade, tang. I love these little uh, quick pasta uh, salads here. If you're needing it for a Sunday dish real quick or to take to a potluck, I love those things. I've got my roaster right here handy. My canner. My vacuum pack sealer there. I use this little shredder all the time. My big pot down here. I'm pretty sure that I've got popcorn in here. I always keep a lot of popcorn. We eat a lot of popcorn and plus you can grind it up and make cornmeal if you need a to. Back there I've got, I think I've got juice and apple cider and stuff right here is some of my uh, dried herbs that I just put up, vacuum packed. First I hung it up and dried it. That right there is sage. So when you do that, when you vacuum pack, you can put a lot up. You just put it in a, th you know, a thing like this until you got time to... I use a little coffee grinder to grind it up and then fill my jars up. I always keep some kind of a protein uh, mix. This is cachava. I know y'all have probably seen commercials on it. This is really good way to get a lot of nutrients in your body. Here's my box of cornflakes. <laughs> good and handy right there. 
Right here is my little stand that I put because I cannot reach down into a cabinet and pull these heavy things out because of my hands. This right here makes it so easy. But anyways, this is my workable pantry right here. It's in the corner of my kitchen. I even have this little freezer in here. This is not my main freezer. See down there, there's more beans. This is just a little freezer that I keep in here. It does need to be defrosted. Um, things that I know I'm going to be using soon. I keep my yeast in here. Um, things like grits and rice that I make in big bulk and I freeze, I stick in here. There is hamburger meat and stuff in the bottom of this for me to use up before I go to the big freezer and start using that meat from the half a cow that we had processed. This is a chicken, chicken stock right here that I froze in squares. And like, you know, just little things of bread and just necessity stuff that don't need to be out in the big freezer. So that's just handy having that little thing right here in my pantry. And <laughs> my refrigerator needs to be cleaned out, but I will show you my freezers. This freezer right here is kind of overwhelming, but all of this is frozen vegetables and fruit. There's some bananas for banana bread or muffins. Um, that's all, every bit of that is frozen vegetables or frozen fruit. And I, it's all in here because I need to use it. This used to be all out in the big freezer. And I brought it all in here because we've got to go through this before I start putting and buying any more frozen vegetables. Frozen vegetables are really good for you. When they pick peas or carrots or broccoli or cauliflower or the fruit, the peaches and stuff. As soon as they pick them, they go through a flash freeze. So what they're doing is they're, they're holding in all them nutrients. I would rather have this or out of my garden than any fresh vegetable out of the store because um, usually they travel for a long ways and a long time. This right here is course where our ice is. This is that corn I put up. It's kind of falling backwards there. I keep hot dogs and uh, just easy accessible things here for me to get a hold of. Things that I need to use pretty quick. Up here on top of my refrigerator, um, it, this is a, I keep a lot of crackers. Crackers. Then I usually have little bags of chips. For the grandkids, I keep in one, and this one right here has usually got some kind of little snacks or something in them. Okay, we're going to walk into what used to be my bedroom, and it's just right here off the kitchen. Those of y'all that's been with me and know the layout of my little house, it's pretty much just one, one big open area. This right here that you see up here is one wall that separates the kitchen from what used to be my bedroom. So we're going to walk around here. Now this used to be my bedroom. What this is now is a, another more or less pantry slash place for more people to, for another table when I have company. I can sit eight people right here at this table. But all of this is more pantry. More pantry, which is what I needed so, so bad. So when I say priorities 
this is what I was talking about. Of course, this back in here is how you go to my washroom and back into the bathroom. I didn't spend a bunch of money building cabinets or big old pantry over here in the corner or whatever. I just, I just didn't even want it. What I wanted was to go find me some old cupboards. Some old cupboards and uh, use them as my pantry. And that's pretty much what I've done. So, when you walk in here, like I said, this used to be my bedroom. But now it's just another room off the kitchen. This right here, Mr. Brown bought for me a couple months ago. It's an old desk. So I'd have a place to uh, do my bills or anything that I'm working on. Pictures of my grandkids. But I'll show you. We got this at a antique store. We had been to flea markets now until I've I've been using it. I put all my bills and stuff in here. Somebody sent me this pretty little homemade flower. So this is really, really a good thing to have. I've got all these drawers now that I can put our Bibles, our uh, Bible study stuff in and uh, just different, different things that uh, I needed. Uh, space for that I didn't have a place to put it is really pretty really pretty and if you look over here this is an old library file cabinet and I know y'all remember these but you see what I used it for I write recipes on index cards and I put them I'm using this for all my recipes I've had this thing a long time this come all the way on a ship from Germany the lady that gave it to me told me the story behind it this right here was an old wooden trunk. Something, I don't even know what it's used for, but I got it at a flea market, and I just loved it. I knew I could do something with it. So I just got some really neat things in it. I love the colonial, primitive look. All, well not all, but a lot of my old old recipe books and pamphlets that y'all have sent me over the years are right here. Look at these. These are pretty old. Got, there we go. It's called Baking Secrets and it's it was wrapped in plastic to keep it from getting rent. This is Darian's recipes. Old, old. And I just kind of display it right here. People want to look at it. They can pick it up and look at it. There's our picture of me, Mr. Brown. Right up here, this is some of the old recipe books that y'all have sent. This right here in the corner. Mr. Brown built this. It's a closet. It's just a corner closet that he built. That's old tin. And he uses that to, to keep his stuff in. It's really the only closet we really have. I got this uh, door handle right here. I got it at Hobby Lobby. But it's just tin. 
and this is the same stuff that I used in the kitchen right here this back cabinet here I bought several a couple years ago and I got it at a place that refurbishes old furniture and stuff they do a really good job my plans are to probably use some um, with me doing the colonial primitive look I may take some black chalk paint or some gray and paint this but this I think come out of an old plumber's uh, store plumbing store I think and I'll show you why here in a minute it's pretty tall it's tall enough and narrow enough that Mr. Brown had to uh, kind of put bolted into the wall so that it wouldn't tip over but I'm telling you it holds a lot of stuff and I'll show it to you here in just a minute And here's the, the table again. This table folds, the leaves fold in on both sides to make a narrow table. Then I've got the three chairs on each side. Like I said, I could fit eight people right here, but mainly what I want to use this table for is when I retire, I'd like to start doing some sewing. So this will be the area that I can come in and lay all my stuff out and do some sewing. This cabinet back here, it's not old, but I bought it. Um, I don't remember. I bought it online, I think. Now, this right here is old. I bought that from an antique store. That's an old rug beater there. And, of course, in most primitive houses, you would see either cross stitch or needlepoint. I think that's really pretty. In here, this is a jelly cabinet. So I've got a lot. This right here is my plum jelly. And then I've got jelly down here on the bottom. So a lot of my jellies are in here. Then I've, right here is a special place for um, some glassware that my friend sent me. And I don't want it to get broke, so I've got it back there. It's an old crock. Because I needed more room to put my buckets. That's what I've got right here stacked up. There's flour and wheat berries. There's wheat berries here. There's flour and wheat berries. Now, I've got an older video showing y'all my pantry, which the only pantry I had. I'm fixing to turn the big light on and see if that helps. The only pantry I had was in the kitchen, and it's one that Mr. Brown uh, built for me, and it was full. And I wanted to do a pantry walkthrough to show y'all, because so many people wanted to know how I stocked my pantry. So I did, and it was a very long video, and if you've not ever seen it, go back and, and watch it. It's an older video. And um, I'm telling you, so many people told me thank you for doing that video, that it just, it gave them a lot of good ideas. And then I had just a, a few that absolutely jumped me for showing my pantry, you know. People are going to come and rob you and all this stuff. Oh, well, you know what? If somebody's needing something to eat, if they need a pound of flour or some wheat berries or something, all I got to do is ask me and I'll let them have it. But ain't nobody going to come. And uh, it's going to be okay, y'all. I promise. But ain't nobody going to learn nothing if you don't get on here and show them. So that's what I do. So I bought this cabinet at the Roost in Pocahontas, Arkansas. That's where I got this big tall cabinet, too. I love everything old. I love everything primitive. I didn't want anything that looked modern or updated or nothing. So I chose this one to keep a lot of my dry goods in. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to come down here and I'm just going to show you what I got going on. 
Danny's Coffee. There's different coffees and espresso back in here. I've got every kind of noodle you can think of. Plenty of lasagna if I need to make freezer meals. Um, I won't need any kind of noodle for a year or more. Uh, I'm going to open this other side up and I'm going to get down the floor. Okay. Now, we talk about dry beans. Dry beans. Now, you can keep these in a bucket, and that's what I done. I had them all in a bucket, and I just never knew what I had. So, when I wanted to make a big pot of beans, or I was ready to can more beans to put on my shelf, I mean, so, they're, they're fine down here. But I've got a huge bag of pinos, northern beans right here on the bottom. I'm not going to take them out. This is a big bag of northern beans. I've got black beans. Um, creamer peas that um, I'm pretty sure that's Azure Standard. Yes, it is. Creamer peas. Oh, no. These are green peas. Sorry, y'all. And then I've got the little red beans right there. This is a mixture that I like to do for chili. This is black beans and it's the little kidney beans, the little red beans. I've got all kinds of lentils. I've got red lentils. I've got red kidney beans. Chickpeas. I never can say that word, but these are the best I never can pronounce that. But anyways, I got these this at uh, War Eagle Mills. Uh, they're online. When I went, when we went that time, I got those. More black beans, red beans, more lentils. I got all kinds. I got enough lentils to get me through for two years. Um, Great Northern, creamer peas, just everything. I do not need any more dry beans, y'all. And I don't even think this is all of them. I think I've got some somewhere else, too. But this is not my workable pantry. This is my pantry to, to pull out of, to put in my workable pantry. This right here is thick rolled oats. Got several Mylar bags of them. Um, this is a company that I really like, and my friend Debbie got me started on this. This is Barton Springs Mill out of, uh, Texas. And this is Blue Corn Mill. And I don't know if that's pronounced Hopi, Hopi Blue, maybe. Not sure. But yes, the corn mill is a light blue, and it makes a beautiful, and it just tastes really good, too. This one right here was, uh, it's called the Bloody Butcher, and it, it's really good. It's really good cornmeal, y'all. Y'all check this out, Barton Springs Mill. What's that say? Dripping Springs, Texas? But it's the best cornmeal. It's got, it's got funny names. Anyways, I got this um, from... Let's see, did I get this from Thrive Market? I, I, I'm thinking I did because I had some some points. Um, it's fine, the package that it's in, it won't get weevils. And plus, I've got bay leaves thrown everywhere. This right here is my corn husk for making tamales. I don't eat these, but this was something that I bought to um, just, it's a long-term pantry staple for time gets hard, you know, this right here, they stay good forever. They're dehydrated potatoes, and, you know, if you're hungry and you can't get to the grocery store, right there, stuff like that. This thing right down here is full of, these are called, what I call conches. These are, 
these are a pasta that I just love them because when you make anything with them, the way they're shaped, that sauce will go right into them little shells and it just it just hangs on to them shells. So these are really good. I don't know if I'll ever use all of them, but I bought a whole box of them. So And like I said, you can see right here, I've got an open bag of bay leaves in here. And I just, in this house, it is so tight. They, when the Mennonites built this house, they built it really tight. I don't have, I've never had any weevils or any ants or anything. Right here on this shelf, I've got grits from different companies. I absolutely love grits. Danny's, it's not his favorite thing. He likes uh, cream of wheat and stuff like that, but I love grits. And you can see that I've got all kinds. I'll never be without grits. This right here is sugar-free powdered monk fruit sweetener. This is a powdered sugar that I bought for a recipe that I haven't done yet because people are wanting to have more dessert recipes using sugar-free, uh, different sugar substitute. This is your monk fruit sweetener and your your brown sugar chuvia. Let's see what's back here. This is organic King Arthur Masaharena flour for making tortillas. Ooh. I don't know. This is gluten free. All-purpose flour. I was going to use it too for a recipe that I haven't done yet. A big bag of nutritional yeast from Thrive Market. I think this is uh, this is vacuum sealed. This is a bag of. Let me get a hold of it. Five seeds mix. This is good to put in homemade granola bars or if you're even uh, in bread, homemade bread. This is chia seeds, flax seeds, pumpkin seeds, sesame seeds, and sunflower seeds. And it says nothing else. So it's vacuum packed. It'll be good forever. <coughs> oh, let's see. This right here is, I think this is pectin, yeah, that's what that is, from Hoser Hill Farm. I get this from, on Amazon. These, I keep these, these last forever in your pantry if you like gnocchi, potato gnocchi. It's wonderful with pesto or to make a little sauce, Alfredo sauce or anything like that. And they're vacuum packed and it's just, it's a good thing for your, for your pantry. Uh, this right here I think is arrowroot or something in there. Okay. I think, I think that's all that's down here. But, Everything I'm showing you was in my one walk-in walk pantry in the kitchen. So you can imagine the mess it was in. Okay, we're not done yet. <laughs> this right here is another pantry. This is in my kitchen. Y'all seen me in front of this, seen me get stuff out of it. This had a lot of my flowers and stuff in it, my, my dry goods, different uh, berries and stuff. And But it was holding a lot of my appliances too, so it was just getting so crowded, y'all. So crowded. So, y'all don't look at my dirty sink. Um, so now I've got it organized. I've even got a little light in here. I can turn on. Whoop. So this right here, you used to couldn't even see what, what was in the back because there was so much stuff. So what I've got in here, my rice, all my different rice. 
and I've got these containers right here off Amazon too and they've got a good seal on them and you can just open the front up and uh, I just take I just take one of my cups and dip out what I want this is jasmine I think that's yeah that's brown rice back there uh, this is my short rice grain rice here I've got all kinds this is red I need to talk I need to do a video on all these rices I got some wild rice uh, dry milk tapioca something else back there I think this is quinoa yes uh, this is for my coffee different but y'all you couldn't even you couldn't even you didn't even know there was rice back there because I had so much up front and I would constantly be like where is my stuff because I couldn't find it I got a few spices here down here is some of my my toaster and my blender and different things that I have to have for different appliances down there and then up here is some sugar some more um, spices back there are is two layers of my Tetley tea my British tea that we love my garden mint so there's different teas back in there and then this is some of my and Mr. Brown's stuff that we use fish oil and vitamin C and all that stuff there's some more organic rice back here um, quite a bit of it powdered sugar brown sugars behind there this is stuff that I use every day that's why it's here right here close with me so that's what this pantry is Mr. Brown made this for me and it I was so proud of him this used to be a TV unit that's what this was we bought it off Craigslist I believe and you could sit your TV right there and he put the extra shelving in it and um then when I decided, you know, I want another pantry, he put the boards on the side, then put this little screen on front, and I just love it. And I know this is getting to be a very long video. Okay, this is my baking area. This is necessity. This is where I'm at. This is where everything's at. <coughs> Handy for me. I do not want my stuff put up in a cabinet where I have to dig it out because I'm in this stuff every single day I've got some herbs drying this right here is another little cabinet pantry for I know it, it actually I did I got all this and kind of straightened it up but it's just got like my jello my pudding gelatin baking soda chocolate chips my different uh, flavorings, vanilla, my different extracts, <clears throat> chocolate chips, stuff for making candy during the holidays, my baking cocoa, all of my baking chocolates, um, just everything you need to, to make some kind of dessert or candy or something like that. That's what that is. Got one more I'm going to show you and this is over here in the corner by the dining table Danny we bought this oh it somebody was having a flea market on the side of the road and when I seen this I told him I wanted it they had $75 on it because it reminded me of my grandmother's that she had on the back porch and I know a lot of y'all have the same cabinet but this is where I keep all my jellies and jams most of them not all of them but some of them there's pie fillings in here this is where I um, peanuts walnuts my canned pecans peach butter uh, canned fruit that is pear that's pear pie filling uh, blackberry jam all of my different jellies and jams and you know I've told y'all before that I just really don't need to be making any more jams because I've got more than we're gonna get eight anyways so that's just another pantry and then down here below I think I've, I've, this is where my cake mixes are peanut butter 
cupcake mixes, dried fruits, just extra stuff. So that's how we keep our pantries. That's how we keep our house stocked. And um, it's the reason I don't go <laughs> grocery store very much, really. Okay, let's go to the top now and stand up and get out, get out of the floor. And this is a lot of my dry goods for baking bread and just cooking. Cooking whatever I need to cook. This is cream of wheat that I ground up myself out of my own wheat berries. Bread crumbs. This is vital wheat gluten. I put a couple tablespoons in if I'm making whole wheat bread. This is a dough enhancer that you use. This is this is a little bit jug my friend Debbie sent me. This is arrow root, and I, you know, back a couple years ago, it, you, it was hard to find um, aluminum-free baking soda, so I just bought what I could find. So I've got a bunch of that still in here. <clears throat> There's those pasta, the conchas, I put in here in a in my big jar. So when I'm needing a handful of them, I can just grab them out of there. There's some more of them little milk, milk jugs from Debbie. Dehydrated hash browns. There is, uh, I think it's pronounced faro or faro can't remember but anyways it's the ancient grain and I keep some of it in here just for easy access have you ever seen a glass funnel for canning or whatever I seen this at a flea market and it was like three dollars I had never seen one before my whole wheat coarse meal Double zero flour for pastries and pasta. This is a yellow cornmeal. <laughs> Excuse me, y'all. This is fresh ground wheat berries. I think this is, uh, this may be red. This may be the hard red. This is a fine, fine cornmeal. This, I think, is a mix. Yeah. That is a biscuit mix. This right here is some of that, uh, yeah, butcher. What was it? Bloody butcher. That's what it was. Bloody butcher cornmeal. And that's what it looks like. This is some more of the really fine cornmeal. And I usually keep some masa harina in this jar. This is dried hominy, cake flour, rye berries, buckwheat, bread flour. I think this is some more whole wheat. This is my blue cornmeal. And this is two things of, let's see, that's, that's the whole oats and uh, rolled oats. And this is the quick oats right here. So that right there now what I'm showing y'all I'm, I'm just telling y'all every bit of this that I'm showing you was in my one walk-in pantry and I absolutely could not find nothing I just had it stacked and stacked and stuff behind each other and in the floor and in buckets and um, aren't they pretty I got this one off eBay salt glaze crocs and I got these two at a antique store and this one at a flea market. I love salt glazed, old salt glazed, salt glazed crocs. So, oh, sorry about that. I'm just being really loud today. <clears throat> and this video is going to be long. Um, so this is how... I have fixed my problem 
my pantry problem. And I just made another wonderful room to be in. And uh, like I said, I love the, the primitive colonial uh, decor and stuff. And uh, that's the old shiffer robe right there. That's Danny's. You can tell he's got a lot of his stuff up there. That's that old desk. My rocking chair by the window. All my, well not all of them, but some of my skillets. So, this cabinet, this black one right here, it's tall but narrow. It was in the kitchen, taking up room. So, what I'm using it for, let's see, I've got a big, I found this, uh, this glass jug here. I got it at a flea market. Old lid goes to it. I didn't give much for it, but I just love it. I keep all my salt in there. This is an old, old tin. Uh, a few of my old, that's a flour sifter and biscuit cutter. But I'm going to open this up. And this is just extra stuff here that was in my walk in pantry. Cereal. Uh, this right here is little bitty uh, things of chicken broth that I get off from Thrive Market, and it's just the right size for when you're uh, making a sauce or something. And then I've got Lipton onion soup mix back here that I use a lot. Sorry about that. That I use a lot in recipes. Crackers, pineapple juice, cereal. Um, right here is some more instant potatoes. Um, like I said, I don't use these. Some of my kids do. Back two years ago when everybody was screaming to, to stock your pantry, I got a bunch of those because of the fact if you couldn't get a hold of potatoes and you didn't have any potatoes, you could go to the dried potatoes. And these have a long shelf life. Even if they go out of date, they're still good. So they're still in there. I've got some more rolled oats. Um, here's some rice crackers that I want to try and I haven't done it yet. Keep forgetting they're in there. There is some unsweetened toasted coconut from Thrive Market. This right here is just little like blueberry muffins and what is that? That is a brown gravy, just little odds and ends that I forget half the times even in there. Then down here I got some more broth. You can never have too much broth. I got vegetable, beef, and chicken down there. And like I said, I've got to start uh, canning me up some chicken broth. That's for sure. But we all have them little odds and ends like that. Now this, <laughs> this, pan this cabinet right here, um, I'd like to paint it too, but I don't know if Mr. Brown let me. Up here, I got some of my old, my old cans up here that I collect. And this has got pasta, spaghetti, all kinds of pasta. It's got my grits in a big jar. Um, Panko bread crumbs, chocolate chips, popcorn, uh, graham cracker crumbs, some more of my dehydrated potato hash browns, oats in the jar, and everything else is just pasta. Different kinds of pasta. Over here, I think I even got more. Yeah, I got me some from this uh, company. I got me some more. I need to put this up. I haven't done it yet. These are whole berries. And I'd never pronounce that right. So I don't even dare say it. But this is an old ancient grain. If I hear it said once, I can go ahead and pronounce it. But I've not said it in so long. Uh, but yeah, I got it from from this company and I, I've got two bags of these that I want to put up I just haven't done it yet 
down here is just some more. I've got another bread maker down here I don't use. Some of my big pots and pans are back there. This is an old uh, container here. Just stuff that I needed to put away that was in my walk-in pantry. My meal that I mill my berries. Then all of my little biscuit cutters and cookie cutters that I collect. Um, some of my quilts there. Of course, you see that walks into <laughs> You see there, that's the washroom there. That's the laundry room. Okay. So I've showed you that much. So we're going to walk over here and I'm going to show you this. This big tall cabinet. Now, y'all heard me say that, you know, I do keep store-bought canned goods. And this was just perfect for that. Now, when you see all this, all of this was in the kitchen in that one walk-in pantry. Now, two years ago, when I started stocking up, I wasn't just stocking up for me. I was stocking up for whoever needed it. So, this is why you don't ever see me do a grocery haul. I've got everything I need. You know, I just... I just walk into my pantry and say, okay, this is what I'm making. Let's find the ingredients. Pumpkin. And this goes about three, three deep, I think. Pineapple. Mandarin oranges. Cherries. Pie filling. Anything that I need to make a dessert or candy I got espresso powder for making the best brownies, extra vanilla, mixed fruit. This right here is a really good cane syrup. Peaches, pears, cranberries. And I want to tell you something. Back when everybody was screaming that you weren't going to be able to find groceries on the shelves, um, I went and bought a lot of fruit, canned fruit, because I feel like you need fruit in your diet, especially our little kids. And if it got to the point that, you know, you couldn't buy the fresh fruit, and if you didn't have a ton of fruit trees, even if you got a ton of fruit trees, don't mean you're gonna get fruit every year. You know, I made sure we had plenty of fruit, and we have been eating quite a bit of it. Right here's just more uh, stuff from making desserts, fudge, um, evaporated milk, sweetened condensed, coconut milk. Uh, this is even sweetened condensed coconut milk right here. These are store-bought jams. Like I said, when I go to these almond stores and different things like that, I always, especially the pepper jelly, I always grab some and put it back because we go to a lot of potlucks and, and holidays and stuff, and this is the best stuff to put on cream cheese. Applesauce, condiments, um, Dijon mustard, barbecue sauce, I went to Henny's A1, we're not gonna be without that. I've always got graham cracker, um, some different little pie crust for um, pies when I need one in a hurry. There's mayonnaise back there too. I'm not real particular. It's usually just whatever, um, whatever I find. So there's yams, there's cut yams, and and pumpkin. It's sweet potato puree. So they're on top. Sweet potato puree, yams, and pumpkin. And I and I do have my own canned um, squashes, butternut squash, and sweet potatoes for making pies. Okay, I'm going to show you how old this cabinet is. You can see by the sticker on here. And we're pretty sure this come out of an old, probably. Um, old store. Plumbing store, probably. Okay, there's a second door here. These canned meats like this last a long time, long shelf life. So two years ago, 
I bought quite a bit of your corned beef and even your Spam. I'm not too good to eat canned Spam. In fact, I, I really like it fried <laughs> up. Um, this right here, Mr. Brown loves tuna salad. And as long as I can order this online, it's probably what it, because it is the pure good tuna. Um, not like, not like this. <laughs> But if you had to, that's that's fine to eat. But this is the good stuff here. I even bought stuff like Beanie Weenies. Danny takes Vienna sausages when he goes fishing. Tomato paste. I have tomato paste in tubes, too, that I keep in the refrigerator. Corned beef hash. Tomato sauce. I keep a lot of green chilies. <clears throat> I even keep cream soups. But y'all know that I've, I've got a video make, where you can make your own cream of something soup. But there's times that I don't even have it made up. It's easy to make up. The cream of mushroom soup is easy to make up, especially when you got canned mushrooms to throw in there. But I always keep these mainly for video purposes, for making casseroles and stuff. But it's just a handy thing. It's not something that we eat every day. I know it's not good for you. I know it's got a lot of salt and stuff, but it's not something we eat every day. But I do keep it in my pantry. Mixed vegetables, tons of mixed vegetables for making a lot of soup in the winter time. And we just like to eat them. This is albacore tuna. I keep canned chicken for if I need some fast uh, chicken salad or something like that. Dark pickles I've had for a while that we haven't ate. Because I've got all kinds of pickles in the refrigerator. Canned carrots. I've had these a while. We need to start eating on these so I can re bring new in. So that's what we're doing. I make a salad with these. With this corn. Shoe peg corn. It's a, it's a bean salad and it's so good. Here I've got cannellini beans. If I'm wanting to make a, a quick. Uh, just like me making the white chicken chili. I could have opened up a couple cans of these. I always keep a thing of Velveeta and this probably needs to be used pretty quick and something. Um, oh here it is. All these tomatoes. We <coughs> will it'll take us forever to go through all these tomatoes. I'm just telling you. This goes about three deep and then all my canned tomato juice and stuff. I mean I don't think I'll get rid of it even this winter. I keep this right here. This is um, tomato paste in a tube. I love using this because a lot of times I just need a little squirt, a little couple of tablespoons of tomato paste in a recipe. I keep anchovy paste for making Caesar salad dressing. Sun-dried tomatoes. Tomato soup. I even have some to take with us to work. This got the little crackers. I need to remember that. Uh, olives, mushrooms in a can. So this is, this used to be all in that one pantry and now it's, it's got a home in here now and I know it's so organized. I just love it. Okay, this is the bottom one. And this is what I was talking about. I've got so many, um, tomato products. I just don't need any. Worcestershire sauce. This is strained tomatoes in a in a bottle. This came from Thrive Market. It is the best tomatoes. Bottled tomatoes you ever eat. And I keep my, my bottles. Got a few. Um, we always had to have Worcestershire sauce. Um, some petite uh, diced tomatoes. Here's some more sun-dried tomatoes. Chili in a can. If we come home and I ain't got nothing cooked and we want a uh, chili dog, there you go. Pork and beans. You could buy three for a dollar. Now they're more than a dollar a can. It's ridiculous. I love pork and beans, y'all. I love them cold. And there's some cans of Bush's baked beans in case I need them in a hurry. Uh, some store-bought relish that I really didn't need, but because I've got homemade. 
I've got pickled beets. Pickled beets are so good for you. I've got several jars of those. Minnows. Let's see. I've got some field peas. Here's some canned black beans. And I had bought a bunch of beans like this for the kids. If they need a can of black beans for chili or something, they know Mama's got it. Here's some canned corn that I've had a while. The kids need to eat. Some refried beans because we're always, always eating some kind of tacos or something. Got some more barbecue sauce, peas, hash. There's even a jar of spaghetti sauce. I always make my own, but I always, always keep at least two jars in the pantry for something quick. And this is my favorite right here. Grey Poupon Mustard. Now here's some more green beans and these are store-bought. And um, I don't know. I don't know if we'll get all these green beans. I probably, I'll probably start giving these green beans to the kids because they do like green beans. Oh. So, if y'all can imagine everything that I have showed y'all, All of that was in that one, that first pantry walk-in, workable pantry that I was talking about. All of it. <sighs> We're not even done. <laughs> but I needed this. This was the priority that I'm talking about. I needed a place off the kitchen for all of my stuff. This is not just stuff that you don't need. This is necessity stuff. This is stuff you need. So that's why I say I had to really prioritize what I'd done and what it needed to be done. So I'm really pleased with it. I'm really happy with it. It added another extra room and pantry. Danny picked out those lights. Those are really pretty. And I've got a chandelier right back here that's been in here. It was, I brought it in here uh, when my bedroom was in here. It's missing two candles. I think it must have got hit with the ladder or something. They fell. But that come out of an old, an old store in Hardy on Main Strip, Hardy. And it was all rusted up, and I spray painted it. So... It's pretty old, really old. They say it's probably about a hundred years old. So this is what I done. So used to this was my bedroom, and this used to be an outside door right here. And if y'all remember, when you went out this door, it it come out to my outdoor kitchen. Well now, they closed all this in, and this is my bedroom, and it's not a big bedroom. But I love this bedroom. It's cozy. We don't, you know, you don't need a big bedroom, really. I mean, it's big enough for what, it's just big enough for us. So, the stairs are still there. The same floor. He put a window here and a door. That's where the screen door used to be. We kept all the tin on top. It's still there. That's the tin that was there when this was a screened-in porch. Shiplap. So this is my bedroom now. And I love it. Like I said, it's not big, but who needs a big bedroom? I mean, what do you need it for? It's wasted space to me. They've done a wonderful job. I wasn't out a bunch of money trying to, to build on a whole nother room. 
And I tried to do this room a little primitive too. Primitive decor. I found that picture there at a flea market. I have no idea who the people are, but I just love the picture. And what's the walls are shiplap, and they done what you do is called a whitewash, but it was done in kind of a gray color. Mr. Brown picked out the lights back there. Those are what they call vintage lights. It's a different kind of a color light. It's not real bright. So this is my bedroom now, and I do love it. My old dresser Danny bought me. We got this in Spring Springfield a couple years ago. It's an old dresser. These were made for me and given to me several years ago by some beautiful subscribers. And I love these. I love these books. They're like a journal. They're handmade, and everything in them is beautiful. I got this at a flea market. That is an old picture of my biological mother when she was in elementary, and my uncle, which was her brother. This was made for me from a lovely subscriber. I got the I got that at a flea market. Got these little shoes at a flea market in this. These little beautiful little trinkets. The first year, my first year of even having a channel, she become like this awesome friend to me, Miss Paula, and she sent me these. They're just little trinkets that you can hide stuff in, jewelry or whatever. And they're just so pretty. And I've had them all this time, and I'll always keep them. She sent these to me. Every gift that y'all have sent to me, whoever you are, believe me, they are stuck somewhere in this house. And people look at them and see them. I'll show y'all another picture of my mama, my biological mother that I never knew. This is her, her name was Sybil. That's my brother Ricky, he's deceased now. He was older than me. When you walk out the back door, you walk into my kitchen garden. So, that is it. That is what we've been working on. I want to show y'all this old picture I got at a flea market. The grandkids think that's pawpaw. So that looks just like pawpaw fishing. <laughs> so, there it is. That's what we've been working on. Oh, when I got this old little wooden uh, baby cradle, I think it come out of Germany or I can't remember. And this antique porcelain doll and then these little leather shoes come from an antique store. I got this rug at Walmart. It's really not what I wanted, but until I find what just really, really catches my eye, it's really pretty, and it feels good on the feet, and it's easy to clean, so I thought it looked kind of vintage. So there it is, my little bedroom, my little vintage primitive bedroom that used to be my cooking porch. <laughs> 
for y'all that don't know or haven't seen my cooking porch, if you'll go back several, several older videos, you'll see me cooking. In fact, I'm going to insert, if I can find it, a picture of the cooking porch so you can see the difference. I hope I can find it. So, anywho, that's what this has been all about. Trying to give me more pantry space. A place where I can do some sewing when I retire. A place for more people to sit. Besides my other dining table. My, my rocking chair over here in front of the window where I can sit and read. That old flag back there. That's, uh, that's a colonial decor. The old primitive colonial flags is what that is I don't it's just decor it's all it is don't mean nothing anyways I hope y'all didn't get bored with this um, I know it was gonna take a while for me to explain it I'll tell you but if you can imagine that I had all of this pantry stuff in that one pantry you'll you'll understand um, why I was getting so much anxiety about it and now I feel so much better about having everything in its place and not only that I didn't have to spend much money doing it and I love it in here it's just another one of my special little rooms so I hope you all enjoyed this video I like sharing with you all and believe me, it doesn't bother me to show people my pantry. Because if there's anybody that ever ever needs a handout, needs something to eat, all they have to do is knock on my door and me and Mr. Brown will always feed them. So maybe this gives some of y'all an idea. We'll see y'all in a couple of days. Mr. Brown might have some up his sleeves. He might have something, some show and tell too. Y'all have a wonderful week. We've had a really good week. Busy with school starting, but we've had a good week. So God bless everybody. We'll see y'all in a few days.